What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Max Torres with Scoop Duck. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button. In today's video, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about women's basketball. Uh, Oregon's women's team is, you know, up there with the best of them in the entire country. And uh, we saw Kelly Graves bring in some amazing five-star freshmen in this 2020 class. So I want to turn the page a little bit and look at the 2021 class. The main focus today is four-star 2021 guard Taylor Bigby from Centennial High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. She is actually the lone commit in the 2021 class for the Ducks, but she's been committed for quite a while. Uh, she committed way back in October of 2019, and she actually signed with the Ducks uh, earlier this year in November. Um, she had offers from just about everywhere in the country. Uh, just to name a few here, we have Florida State, Georgia, UCLA, USC, UNC, Michigan, and others. So really a loaded offer sheet for the four-star guard coming out of Vegas. Uh, some other accolades that kind of go with her and her game. She's the number 12 guard in the country, good for the number 29 overall player in the 2021 class. And she is a three-time state champion in the state of Nevada. Uh, which has actually come on come along as uh, you know one of the premier states for high school talent in football and basketball so the ducks are getting a strong one in Bigby and she was also the 2020 Nevada Gatorade uh, player of the year so she's uh, she's a baller and uh, I actually had a chance to sit down with her in a zoom interview uh, a while ago um, kind of have this one in the archives but been busy with school so I haven't been able to get it up just yet but Wanted to get it up now, bring women's basketball to the channel. So enough blabbering from me. Let's hop into the Zoom and I'll catch you guys after the interview. All right. I want to welcome in the next guest on the Scoop Duck YouTube channel. Switching things up a little bit. I want to welcome in Oregon 2021 women's basketball signee, Taylor Big, Big B. Taylor, how's it going? Thanks for being here. Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Excited to uh, excited to talk to you and, and see what uh, what your hoops journey has been like. So starting things off here, um, I know you. it's been a while since you committed, uh, committed in October of 2019. Uh, just I want to talk about that. Why did you, uh, why did you decide to commit to Oregon? Um, I chose Oregon because um, it was a school that felt most genuine and felt like home to me. Um, Kelly had been recruiting me since my freshman year. Um, so I built a great relationship with him and uh, Mark. Um, and then, like, later on down the line, I got close with the rest of them, too. But um, I would just say Kelly was, like, I loved how genuine everything was. Like, you know, when you talk to coaches sometimes through the recruiting process when you're, like, a top recruit, it's always about basketball. Or, like, you can tell, like, who's genuine and who's not. Um, and I would definitely say Kelly and Mark are super genuine. Uh, I also picked their school because um, – I love their style of play. Like I, I fit perfect in their system. Um, I love how he spaces the floor out with on ball picks and stuff. Um, and I also picked uh, Oregon because of uh, Kelly and how he believes in me. Um, like he, a lot of things that people think I can't do, like he says like, yes, you can, like you just, you know, you don't do it enough, but it's not that you can't do it. And I'd say like, he's the first ever coach to, out of my whole recruiting process, um, to, you know, like, have confidence. Like, you know, you want to play for someone who has confidence in you, you know, and I that from him. Awesome. Yeah, I always got to have a coach that believes in you. Uh, I, I know that you had a, a lot of really high-profile offers, uh, you know, certainly uh, could have chosen from a lot of schools. Um, kind of walk me through what your recruitment process was like. I know you said that Oregon offered early, but I, I, I and I'm sure a lot of other people don't really know what the – what the recruiting process is like for women's basketball. Um, okay. So, uh, probably got like my first offer in like eighth grade. Um, and then like I went to Centennial my freshman year and I probably had about like maybe like five offers. And then after my first season of playing with Centennial as a freshman, I went to play in the EYBL. And that's kind of where like I blew up and like started gaining and like, getting a whole bunch of offers. Um, I would say the recruiting process, like everyone thinks like, oh, I mean, like, it's cool for people to be like, oh, like you have like 20 plus offers, but really like it's cool it is, um, especially when you have to talk to like a whole bunch of coaches all the time. 
and like you're building relationships with them I'd say the hardest thing for me was when I cut down my list and I got to like well I knew where I wanted to go but having to cut down my list and then having to let like the coaches know like where I'm going uh, was the hardest for me because it is cool like I said it is cool to have a whole bunch of offers and be like you know one of the top But it's also, like, one of those things, like, once you build a relationship with, like, coaches, like, telling them that you're not going to their school. And, like, you know, some – like, that's another thing. Like, when I had to call the coaches, it was, like, a coach would ask me, like, well, what did I do wrong? Or, like, how could I improve? You know, stuff like that. And, like, really, like, I don't think any of them did anything wrong. It was just Kelly beat them to it, you know? And so, like, I think that was, like, my hardest part. But the recruitment process, I would say never get complacent either. Like just because you have a whole bunch of offers like that you could lose them within the blink of an eye. Um, And not just that, but just because you hold an offer doesn't mean that they're not offering other kids that probably do just what you do or if not better, you know. So I would just say like that's one thing it taught me too. like never get complacent. Certainly, uh, certainly crazy getting your first offer as an eighth grader. I mean, that, that was probably the biggest thing that stuck out to me. What, what was, you know, your reaction like? And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you talked to your parents and, you know, that, that's got to be big getting an offer to play college ball that young. Um, I was actually very, like, I didn't know many eighth graders who had offers at that, um, in, at that age. Um, I was excited because, like, I – I'm very humble. So like, I never thought like I'd be that good at basketball or like, you know, go far with it. So when I did get an offer, it kind of made me shift gears a little bit. Like, Oh, like, like I got, I could actually be like someone someday, you know, like in this sport. And so I, like, I was super excited because like that is an accomplishment and you don't see many people getting offered at that age because you're super young. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like we're seeing people get offered earlier and earlier across all kinds of sports. I was talking to somebody a couple months ago that committed to Oregon before he even started high school, um, which, really? is, which is which is pretty wild. Yeah, he was a, a baseball recruit. But um, you, you were talking about how you uh, you know went on the EYBL circuit, and that's kind of where you blew up, right? Um, I actually just finished a, a, a really good book about uh, you know AAU basketball and travel basketball. Uh, I know you're probably traveling, you know, all, all over the country with, you know, really good uh, other basketball players. What was that kind of experience like and what did it teach you? Um, I would say that EYBL taught me to compete. Like I'm, I've always been someone who competes because I hate losing, but it just taught me like there's no such thing as like a bad team in EYBL. Like you could be up by 20 points and the team could simply come back. Like that's one thing EYBL taught me. And it was such a blessing to play against people um who were just as good if not better than me um and I also played in the EYBO I played up so I had to play against like the Deja Kelly's um you know like all the super good players in 2020 I had to play against them I what was that my sophomore no not my sophomore was it yeah like my sophomore like my sophomore uh summer which was like good for me because eventually like when I get to Oregon, like I'm going to be playing against them. But um, I mean, like it, 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 I, I can't, I'm so competitive that like I don't, I love to win, but I'd rather play against the best of the best than to like be winning against people who suck, you know? Cause like who can't beat anyone, like someone who sucks And Vegas basketball, like isn't good. So like my high school team, like uh, I have three rings from my high school team. So like we blow through everyone in the city. Like we blow out everyone by like 30 points, if not more. So, I mean, like I love, I love it, but it was good to play against other people, you know, people who are better, better teams. Yeah. That, that's going to be a, a factor. I feel like, you know, you always want to raise the level of competition that you're playing against. And especially with with a program like Oregon, uh, you know, they want to be the, the best of the best because that's the, the relationship or sorry, not the, the kind of, um, gosh, I can't talk. The, the image, the, the culture, exactly. Thank you. The culture that they've developed there. Um, looking a little bit more at your recruitment to Oregon. Um, I, I did see that you posted some pictures of when you came out to visit in Eugene. 
uh, kind of walk me through it with that. What, what was it like to, to visit Oregon? And then it looks like you also got to, to meet Sabrina Ionescu. Yeah, um, I loved it, actually. Um, it was really cool to come. Um, yeah, I got it's crazy because like meeting like Ruthie saw too and Sabrina and like they're like pros now. Um, it's crazy. Like they're actually like super cool people like give you nothing but knowledge like seriously like if I had any question about basketball like they helped me or they told me about it I mean it's like sometimes like you would think like people who are you know like goats like they'd be like buffles and like they weren't at all um I love the campus too like your guys technology um I like the housing area that they have the arena I just love the whole like that's the thing like before I even committed to Oregon um, I already knew that's where I wanted to go. I just didn't, I knew that like a couple months ahead of time. I just didn't want to commit somewhere where I'd never been. And so like when I did get to get there and, you know, be around the girls, watch practice, hang out with Kelly and Mark and the whole coaching staff, like it literally felt like home. And like, I loved it seriously. And then I also loved the, the fan base they have for like women's sports. Like you don't see that much. You see more, um, more fan bases towards like men's sports so like that's another thing that like caught my attention and of course their gear I love how much gear they get how nice it is yeah I I always hear about the the gear um what's funny I talk to a lot of football recruits and they'll say yeah it's nice and everything but you know it's not 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 a huge factor but they they always stay you know dripped out uh at, at Oregon um you mentioned, you know, meeting Sabrina and meeting some of the, the star players that have come through that program. Now, fast forward in a, a couple of months, I'm not sure exactly when you'll be here in Eugene, but w- what's it like for you to, you know, be following in, in footsteps like that and to, to come to a program that has the tradition that Oregon does? Um, it's honestly a blessing and it's amazing. Like, that's definitely one of my goals is to play pro. So being able to like talk and meet them, it just makes me want to push harder and work harder for my ultimate goal. Um, So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just make me want to work harder. And then just knowing like that's what my coaches, you know, can produce is just even better. Yeah, you know, you're in good hands with uh, with Kelly Graves and the rest of the staff there. Uh, so I know that you're the uh, the only commit right now in, the, in this 2021 class. My, my next question for you is, have you been able to uh, develop or maintain a relationship with any of the players that are currently on the team? And is there anyone else that you're kind of hoping might join you uh, in Eugene as part of your class? Um, I actually don't know anyone who's going to join me in my class. Um, but I actually know Kylie and Sid. Um, I used to play with them. Um, we were all a part of like Blue Star 30. It's like a camp type thing. Um, we were all a part of that. So like I knew them before they committed to Oregon. And then um, we all played in the EYBL. So, I mean, they live across the country. So like, I don't really, you know, talk to them much, but like it, there are people I know and built relationships with. Um, Tiana, I actually met her um, my junior season uh, I was, we were in San Diego, but like I knew she was committed to Oregon, but I didn't really know her like that either. Um, I made, I built a good relationship with Sedona when I was there. Like she was probably one person who kind of took me under her wing and would like show me around. Um, I like the football game, you know, she would like walk around like the whole like arena and stuff with me. Uh, she was on the field with me. Um recently after I signed the day I signed they all called me and made me feel welcome so like Sid called me Kylie called me like they all called me or texted me to tell me like congrats like enjoy your day stuff like that so I definitely think like from feeling welcome like building a better relationship with all of them is going to be even better but I know majority of them because I was there before I committed so you seem like you had some, uh, you know, pre-existing relationships that might have might have helped seal the deal before you ended up going to Oregon. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then, kind of just looking at, um, you said that you just signed this week. Um, what what was it like for you to, you know, put the pen to paper and kind of be able to put a stamp on the recruiting process and and put it behind you? 
Um, it was very like I felt so accomplished. Not that like you know I'm done, but I felt accomplished with all my hard work and stuff that I put to the game of basketball. Um, it was amazing to see like I didn't have like a huge like signing party type thing because it was kind of last minute because of like you know COVID and stuff. But um, all my coaches from when I first started playing basketball. So like uh, I first started playing. Um, like seven or eight that was like what age I started playing at um I was not good and like I sucked and I played in the NJB like league at like the YMCA and like my coaches from there came my middle school coaches of course my high school coaches um but it was just cool to see like everyone who's my trainers like everyone who's been like a a factor in my journey they were all there and then of course my teammates and then my parents like I, I don't know what I would do without my parents especially my dad um he helps me with a lot um not like with training not just like with basketball but just you know being a woman and how I carry myself um but it, it was just amazing like I'm happy like another thing was like I've always wanted to make my my parents proud um and I'm the middle child like I have an older brother and he's already gone to college so it was just cool to like enjoy the moment of signing and like I'm going to a really good school too, so it's like I was pretty happy. I'm I'm sure they're uh, they're feeling super proud of you after uh, all the work that you've put in. You were saying you felt accomplished in that moment. Uh, I'm sure now you're kind of maybe transitioning a little bit, looking ahead to when you get here in Eugene, seeing that stuff's pretty shut down. Uh, kind of on that uh, topic, what are some of your goals that you might have while while you're here in Eugene? Um, I definitely, I want to make an impact as a freshman. Like, I don't want to be a freshman to, you know, wait your turn freshman. Um, I want to definitely have major minutes or impact the game as best I can, you know, be a good teammate, stuff like that. But my ultimate goal, because I hate losing, I want to win the Pac-12 tournament that's here in Vegas every year. And I want a ring, like a national championship. Um, I also want to just perfect my craft too. Like that's another goal. Um, and I want to get stronger. Certainly some, some awesome goals to have. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that uh, all the Oregon fans love hearing the national championship aspirations from pretty much everybody I talk to on this channel, especially with this women's team, seeing that they were probably the favorites last year or certainly would have uh, you know received a heavy consideration. Uh, you talked about sharpening your craft. Uh, which is obviously super important for any athlete. But with you in particular, what, what would you say are some of the strengths to your game for someone who maybe hasn't seen you play before? Um, I would say my ability to defend um, and rebound. And um, I'm def I'm not going to say passive, but I'm definitely a, like, I'll get my whole team going, like, you know, get my teammates shots, you know, before I get myself, so, like, I'm very selfless. I'd say those are, like, three main things. If someone was to ever see me play for the first time, would be like, wow, those are things that I probably say to them. You sound like a, a team first player, which it was uh, always great to have on, on any, in any program. Uh, yeah. we, we've learned, a, we talked a lot about, you know, your recruitment and your game and what it's going to be like at Oregon. Um, but what I kind of like to do with these interviews is get to know you a little bit more, um, as you know, a person, right. Cause you're, you're more mm -hmm. than just an athlete. So, um, my question for you, Taylor is, uh, who, who are you off the court? What do you like to do in your, your free time? Um, off the court, I, I love shopping. Um, I, I have a little sister. So like me and my sister, are, like together 24 seven, um, my brother and I are super close. So when he was here, I would be with him 24 seven too. Um, I'm a person who likes to sleep a lot. Like I can sit down for like 0.2 seconds and fall asleep. And then of course, like with basketball workouts and stuff, like I'm, I sleep almost all day if I don't have anything to do. Um, I like going out with my friends. Um, I love seafood. Um, I would just, I really like shopping. Like if you ask anyone who knows me, like they'd know that like I love shopping. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be excited to, uh, you know, get the gear that all the freshmen do, all the team does once yeah. you, once you get here. Um, 
talking again about you getting here, but also, you know, off the court, um, do you have any kind of a uh, career interests or like kind of, we know that basketball doesn't last forever, which is probably hard to think about now, but um, yeah. like any majors in mind, anything like that sounded cool to you? Um, yeah, I want to major in business. Um, my dad actually kind of inspired me to major in business because he, um, he has his own business. Um, he does mental health. So he, um, I just like how flexible he, and I, that's nothing. I don't work for anyone. I want to be the boss. So I like how he has like freedom. Like he doesn't have to wake up at six o'clock every morning, be to work by seven. Like he can pick and choose like what time he wants to work throughout the day. And I think, I know I'm going to play basketball for forever or God forbid something happens, but, um, if I like while I play like because the goal is to play pro so like if I'm playing pro like I feel like if I have my own business um because you know women don't get paid much um I could have like my own clothing line or something and that like you know will bring more money just um I would just want to do something like on the side like not just basketball you know because like you said basketball is only going to be around for so long so that's one thing I do want to do I want to major in business um I might minor in accounting. I'm not sure. That, that That's one thing you said with the business. Uh, I think that's really fascinating with uh, kind of the sports landscape right now is we're kind of seeing it driven home more like build your brand like from, from the jump. And then especially with name, image, and likeness looking like it's going to become a thing here in college sports pretty soon. Um, that's got to be pretty exciting to look forward to. Yeah. All right. And then just a couple more for you here, Taylor. Um, kind of, I, I told you before we uh, hit record here that you're the, the first uh, woman athlete that I've, a uh, female athlete that I've gotten to talk to here on the channel. Uh, so my question for you, you know, what are people not talking about in, in women's basketball? We know that the Oregon women's team is great. Um, and that, you know, the team USA team is great, but what's, what's, you know, the conversation that we're not having? Um, I would just say from like a money standpoint, um, like men get paid way more than women do. Um, I think it is good to see, you know, some of the men in the, um, you know, in the men's league, they do come in like support women's basketball. I just don't think like we, I feel like we're, boys are put on a pedestal um, to women. And of course, like, you know, people do say like, oh, well, um, the men's game is more, um, I guess you could say, like, entertaining to watch. Um, I would say that. Um, what's another factor? Uh, I don't know. Like, that's my main, like, my main focus. Um, I feel like we should be treated, like, equal sense. Like, we should all get the same recognition, same attention, um, yeah, that's, I don't really know what else. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I definitely, you know, was seeing stories like that pop up after the Lakers won the championship, just seeing the, you know, the, the prize money, I guess you could say, or like the contract incentives, just astronomical differences between men and women, which is just ridiculous. So, um, I, I'm, I'm right there with you hoping that, uh, you know, women can, can get their, get what they're due especially because they're, you know, phenomenal athletes, just like, just like the men are. Um, yeah. the, the, the question that I love ending these interviews with, um, we were talking about how you're the, the lone commit right now, but I'm sure you're really excited to get here to Eugene. Do you have any kind of a message that you'd want to share with the Oregon fans who are, who are rocking with you and they're, they're ready to cheer you on? Um, I want to say thank you to all of them because I haven't even met half of them yet. And I love the support and love I get on social media and I'm definitely coming to Oregon with the mindset to win a national championship. Right on. There you go. Well, well, Taylor, thank you so much again for, for taking the time to talk to me today. It was great meeting you and, and learning about uh, your basketball journey and I, I wish you all the best. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for another video here on the Scoop Duck YouTube channel. Want to give a big thank you to Taylor for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, got to learn a little about her hoops journey and what it's like for her coming from Vegas to Eugene in the 2021 class, joining a uh, loaded group 
uh, of women on the Kelly Graves Duck Squad. If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of the other ones I've made here on the channel, talking a lot about football with Oregon football recruits, as well as baseball, and then now bringing women's basketball into the picture as well. Um, if you want to find more of my work, you can head over to scoopduck.com, and uh, you can find my written stories there, as well as the Yell O podcast, which I co-host with Jacob Archer, who also writes at Scoop Duck. And you can uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter at mtourisports. You can see it right there on your screen. That'll do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.